morning. Can you hear me now? Can everyone hear me at this volume? Uh, I welcome you to uh, this beautiful morning. We've been blessed uh, for three weeks in a row of having good weather. I hope those of you out in the sun have sunscreen, unless you're like Kathy with an umbrella. Um, I, I've already sunburned the top of my head once so I'm, I'm <laughs> this year, so I'm, I feel better being in the shade up here for a while, but uh, just be careful uh, with it. But, we welcome you this day. Uh, ne next time I do worship, I'm going to be dressed like Ernie. <laughs> or those of you with shorts and stuff on. I, I actually had a sport coat on, but it's too hot and it's too nice. So I welcome you. A couple announcements. Heidi has a Bible school announcement. And you, if you want to use that place, I'm sure Grace will defer. So for those of you who weren't here last week and those of you who need a refresher, we're going to be doing Bible school the first week of August. Uh, it's going to be three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I think it's the 3rd, the 5th, and the 7th. I do need you to sign up. So if you have children, if you have neighbors uh, that have children that want to come, uh, please go on the church website and sign up. If not, Sue uh, does have some sign-up papers in the office. You can give Sue a call. Uh, here at the church and she'll get you all the information that you need. Uh, how it's going to work again this year is it's Knights of the North Castle. You will be staying with your children. It will be from 6.30 until 8. It's a little bit shorter. I need my older kids, as in the guys that are in confirmation class or have come out of confirmation class already. Uh, I'm looking hopefully for the teenagers out there to sign up to work on the play. We are going to have drive-in Bible school. You're going to drive in. We're going to put on a play uh, down here in the lower parking lot in the field. Uh, there will be a short lesson and the story, and the stories are funny. I love them. Um, each lesson is standalone. You don't have to come to all three lessons, but we do need to know when you're coming in. Uh, there will be snack, there will be a craft that you will take home, and uh, we're going to have Amber Pierce here as well, and Gracie, and we're going to be doing uh, a sing-along, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. This program is a lot of fun, so I need my knights to sign up, and I need the older kids to come see me. You don't have to memorize a part, there's no singing. Uh, I will give you cards and, and scripts to read off of, and we'll take care of you. It's just fun. It's just a lot of fun. So please, please sign up. Thank you. Heidi, can yeah. we have sign up sheets to hand out and have out here? Or is yeah, absolutely. So if you could ask Sue for the next couple of weeks, we'll get some, and when you, when you come in with a bulletin, yep. we can And we're also going to have a banner out front, too, as well, that's going to have all the information on as well. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Heidi. Linda has asked during, you, you notice that Linda has been playing uh, Pray Little Music when you get here. If there's particular pieces you would like to hear her play, just tell her and she'll be glad to include them both there and I think there's one other place in the worship uh, that there is music that is played. If you want to hear something specific, just let Linda know that and I'm sure she will accommodate you. Someone had asked about standing for the Lord's Prayer. 
There's, if you would want to stand for the Lord's Prayer, that is perfectly fine. Just if the Lord's Prayer, stand up. If you want to kneel for the Lord's Prayer, <laughs> no, one, no one wants to do that. You know, in the days when the, the martyrs would do penitential, they would kneel for long periods of time and, on rocks and all that stuff that, that they would, but whatever. If you, whatever, if you'd like to stand during the Lord's Prayer, please feel free to do it. If you do prefer to remain sitting, that's fine too. So whatever you're welcome to do, uh, whatever you would want as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Two, uh, a couple of announcements. One, we'd ask to keep in your prayers the family of Louise Kelleher. Louise uh, died several weeks ago, but her funeral services were this past Thursday. So please keep the Kelleher family in your thoughts and your prayers. Also, we'd ask to keep the... We ask that you keep the family of Paul Mayorchek, and especially his wife Elaine. Paul died this past week, and his services, Paul's services, will be sometime in July. So please keep the Mayorchek and the Kelleher families in your thoughts and your prayers. Now, are there birthdays? Is anybody selling a... Selling? You want to sell your birthday? If you can. You, how many, it depends on how many you want to sell. Some people might want to buy them. But anybody celebrating birthdays this week? I can't, how many years? 40. Well, happy 40th birthday. I, get, you know, I can't tell people are because of the mask, but everybody in sunglasses and a mask, I have no idea who I'm looking at. And you notice I don't have my glasses on because when I walk around with a mask on, I, I can't see anyways because it all fogs up. So other birthdays. Anniversaries. No anniversaries? No one admitting to an anniversary? Well, for those things, we do give thanks for those special moments uh, in our lives. Anything else that anyone would like to share before we begin our worship? Father's Day. How could I forget that? It's better for fathers to forget Father's Day than mothers. And the fathers here wouldn't shoot me if I forgot Father's Day. They would say, ah, but the Mother's Day, you got to be real careful. But yes, happy Father's Day for those who are uh, for Father. Thank you. And I saw someone, was that? Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, what's, what's nice about it, I know that someone will always cover me if I forget things like that. So thanks. Anything else? Well then, let us begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. reconciling God, we confess. we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, the by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So we can wave, we can do whatever to say good, good morning and God's peace be with all of you. <laughs> okay, Grace. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray in unison. Teach us, good Lord good God, God, to serve, serve you as you deserve, deserve to, to give and, and not to count the cost, not to heed the wounds, to toil, toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not ask for reward, except of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the 20th chapter, beginning at the seventh verse. Jeremiah accuses God of forcing him into a ministry that brings him only contempt and persecution. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yet, yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. O oh Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take a revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. We will read responsibly Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humble myself with that, but that was my I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. The second lesson is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. In baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. We have been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live freed from sin. Paul writes, 
Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Remember, two weeks ago, I said that we would come back, and I noticed, I, I'm not sure, or Ella and Winston, if they can come up here if they want to, uh, as long as they, they can stay close to each other but keep six feet away from me and anybody else, I think we can do that. I, I've got to, I, I go out further, but Ernie said I couldn't. You know, and Ernie's in charge. I do whatever Ernie tells me to do, at least on Sunday morning during worship. Anybody else wants to come up with that, with uh if you do, you just stay apart. So, Now, a couple of weeks ago, remember we said I said we would come back to something in terms of we would take symbols and things that we see all the time but we don't pay much attention to. Now, Winston, and, oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Stay, give, me, give me six feet here. I don't want to get... We want everybody to look at this absolutely, I think, beautiful piece of sculpture here on the front of the church. And, you know, it's been here for how many years? How many of you have paid much attention to it? Someone said the other week, it's always there, but I really never looked at it. And it's, it's really a beautiful piece of sculpture. And, and so what do you see when you see up at that sculpture? When you look at that, that that's called sculpture. I have to be, watch what I'm doing here. That is someone, an artist, made that piece of sculpture on the front of the church. And when you look at it, what do you see? What do you think you're looking at? You, you can pull your, if you want to talk, you can tell your mask down a little bit. Just, or don't you see anything? What, when you look at that metal thing there, what do you, what do you think you're looking at? A statue. A statue? Well, in some, yes. Anything else? What do you see when you look at it? Person. Person. A person. You did, that's right. Who do you think the person might be? God. God? That's true. What part of God? If there's gods of three parts, what part would is the one who came alive and was born at Christmas? What's the right answer for Jesus? Remember, in children's sermon, the right answer is always Jesus. You cannot go wrong by saying Jesus. So what is what do you think Jesus is, if that is Jesus, is doing in that what does this picture look like? He came out of the grave. <laughs> he came out of the grave. I hadn't thought that. Very well. That I, I can see that, him raising up. When we think of what we call the ascension, Jesus raising up. I can see that. Anything, anyone want to help Winston and, and all up here to see what else you see up there? What, what, you have to yell, right? Communion? Okay, the wine glass on the side, that's one, I think, way to look at that. What are you seeing? The light of the world. The light of the world. You know, that, the, that, that chalice that Roger's referring to, and Linda said, the light of the world, it looks like, it can also look like a candle. You know, the little flame on the, on the thing coming out of it. It looks like a hand, on the le I think, on the left side. It's, a, it, in, it's in a position of 
the arms are wide open and open. There's a, you know, one of the things, someone did a thing once. When we go like this, it's a, it's a welcoming position. If we're tight and all wound up, we're like this. What kind of church do you want to come into? One where people are all bound up and tight or one, ones who are with their arms wide open in a position of openness. So you see how that's, it's, it's open up there, Ellen, in Winston? It's a, I think what I see is this openness of Christ, prayerfully the openness of the people of God here to, um, you know, to be open to outsiders and be open to proclaiming God's love and grace. So when you think of that now, I think it's really a beautiful piece. When we went inside to go outside, you know, the openness of Christ, the receiving Christ's body and blood it, through the chalice, the chalice which also is the light of the world. So it's, I'm not sure what, what the artist would say, and maybe someday we can get find out what <laughs> he had in mind, but it's a gorgeous, beautiful openness to Christ. Now what I asked Linda to go back and get, what I have here, Pastor Manny will be here next week. We remember when we started, when we first started, Pastor Manny did church one week, I did it the next. Well, we're, we're redoing it. He will have his special stuff next time. But I know that you folks, would you like something in there? These have not been touched in a week. There's no germs on any of these, you know, unless Linda snuck one out when she went back to get them. Take two. Come on. They've been, if you want two M&Ms, it's a limited supply. Milky Way's M&Ms, a couple nerds. Take one for your dad and mom, too. <laughs> They're going to need it. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Anybody else need chocolate? The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. When I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the Father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, you know, a delightful Father's Day lesson. You know, who, 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 in, where it talks about in here, when one loves father or mother more than me in, 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 in that. Um, but we, we need to read the whole thing through. Jesus is not advocating families to be dissentious. Jesus is advocating when you come down to the very last line is really what is driving this text of reminding us of the need to put God first, and 
in the, the Gospels written, those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. With a basic premise that, that when we give up our lives to Christ, all life will fall in order be, behind that. And sometimes it will cause dissension in, in families. But in most cases, those dissensions might and most naturally are, are worked through. You know, we, look, we look at our, our world. We can stand right outside in public. We have no fear of being persecuted, which is not typical in all places of the world in which, which we live. Whether you're in, in Sudan or South <clears throat> Saudi Arabia, China, and other places where Christianity is actively discouraged and you put your life at risk to profess your faith in Christ in any public way. For us, that's not the case, obviously. We sit here in the middle of the, uh, a beautiful day on a major highway with no fear that we're going to get per persecuted uh, for uh, <coughs> celebrating and worshiping our God. It's not always the case. It's not always been the case. It was not the case for the faithful when when this text was written. It, the, if you think about uh, what was going on there, and even for for people in face, my mother-in-law's cousin was an Anglican <laughs> member of the Church of England who decided to become a Carmelite nun. Her father was not happy with her, and I'm not sure how. I think he came to love his daughter, but he never fully accepted the fact that she gave up her life. It really, if you you know, Carmelites are cloistered, which means they live in a set apart, and they now they very seldom go out into the community. Everything in their ministry is all done in the cloister. So you really are withdrawing from the world to be a Carmelite nun. And his, 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 the dad was just not happy about giving up his daughter to that. It was not what he had in mind. But she chose, that's what she felt God was calling her to do, and she followed that, that call to, you know, to follow Christ being a Carmelite nun. It's really, when I went to visit her, and it was there for her um, Diamond Jubilee, which means the 60th anniversary of her consecration as a nun, it was fascinating. You never would have found, if we had limited in contact with her, we could go in the same room with her for like a half hour and the whole time we were there. Um, but the, the joy and, and the good humor of the ladies, the faithfulness of them was, was inspiring to see. And their care for the outsider, when we came in there, they treated visitors like royalty, much nicer than they really needed to. But they really wanted to exude that sense of welcome. But <clears throat> So for her... She had to give up. She had to put, for God, she gave up the approval of her family to follow Christ in that way. For the disciples 2,000 years ago, when you think about it, it, it was even more challenging and more difficult. The religious authorities, uh, the church, the synagogues, the temple fo folks, they received persecution and, and they were pushed outside from that. The Romans persecuted them. We know the whole story of how Jesus and the Romans the, their family and friends uh, clearly, in many cases, thought they were, were totally out of their mind. Why would you do and put yourself at risk for that? But they did it. People were not interested in hearing their story of faith for the most part. Obviously, some listened eventually or we wouldn't be here today. So Jesus knew what they were going through. He knew the sacrifice they would have to make to follow him and, and to experience that life. And he is in these texts affirming them and ch in telling them that he is with them. And he says, so he's <clears throat> when he sends out his disciples with these words of comfort, he says, so have no fear of them. Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. I don't even remember the story of Tom Dooley. There's a camp song that goes with Tom Dooley. Uh, it, Tom Dooley epitomizes one who is, who is willing to give up a very comfortable life that he could go into Southeast Asia as a, as a physician and as an evangelist. So he gave up, I wouldn't say doctors' lives can be challenging, but a very comfortable life as a doctor to follow Christ, to go and use his gifts in, in Southeast Asia. Asia. Um, and he... And he 
did this at a very young age. And he organized hospitals as he proclaimed his faith. He also uh, died at a very young age. He basically emptied himself for God in the 34 years that he lived. And, he, and, and, and as he speaks to why he was willing to do this, he was uh, writing Ted, uh, Father Hes Hesburgh. If you remember, Father Hesburgh, was, he, went to know, he was a Notre Dame graduate. Um, we don't hear a lot of Notre Dame graduates from Lutherans, but Hesburgh was always a brilliant man and stuff. But whatever, his career as a doctor, he was very much connected to Notre Dame. And so when he is very sick and very ill in Asia, where he is building these uh, uh, hospitals, he's also a fundraiser. Because if you're going to be a missionary and do hospitals, you got to find money. There's not money there. So he became and did all of that stuff. And so he writes, as he's near death, he writes, They've got me down, flat on the back, with plaster, sandbags, and hot water bottles. I've contrived a way of pumping the bed up a little so that with a long reach I can get to my typewriter. Obviously, this was written a while ago. Two things prompt this note to you. The first is <clears throat> that whenever my cancer acts up a bit, and it is certainly acting up now, I turn inward. Less do I think of... My hospitals around the world are the 94 doctors, the fundraisers, and all those things that have been part of my life. More <clears throat> do I think of the one divine doctor and my personal fund of grace. Interesting phrase, my fund of grace that he has, he has, bet his, his, I assume since has been filled, this fund of grace, by his ministry to the, to the people he has been ministering to, by the work that he has been doing. He has become pretty definite that cancer has spread to my, the lumbar vertebrae in his back, accounting for all the back problems over the last two months. I have monstrous phantoms, and all men do, and inside and outside the wind blows. But when the time comes, like now, then the storm around me does not matter. The winds within me do not matter. Nothing or earthly or human can touch me. A peace gathers in my heart. What seems unpossessable I can utter because I can pray. I can com communicate. And he concludes by saying, how do people endure anything on earth if they cannot have God? So here's a man who's dedicated his very short life to God on his deathbed. And all he can do, in a sense, is give thanks for the presence of God in his life, give thanks to God for what he has been able to do with the gifts that he has been blessed with. So God sends us. He obviously filled, filled Tom Dooley with a gift of grace, a fund of grace that enabled him to deal with his life and his death, as it were. So as we read in, our, our, in, in the gospel today, what do we do amidst the word, a world that at times we don't know how to respond to? And in the, in the lesson today, it reads, The God who holds us in his arms reminds us, do not be afraid. It's amazing to me how often that phraseology, do not be afraid, comes up in the scriptures. Jesus knew that it was challenging and that we would be, they people of the day were challenged and that we will be challenged to not be afraid because if God cares for the sparrows, and as small as they be, and they are all in God's care, so most assuredly are you, the gospel reads. Now, our, our fears that we have, the challenges that we had in, as we live our life to the grace of God, putting God first and living God through that, is different than they have, they have had to do. We have our fears. And I'm not sure what if you think of your fears of faith, I think of some of the times as a pastor that I have been scared to death, not so much for, for my own health, for my physical health, but being in situations uh, that I had no idea. Really, there's no book to, re to, to read and, and, do, and to find out about. I can remember being in CPE, Clinical Pastoral Education. It's part of the seminary training process where you spend... Uh, uh, th like three months, for me it was in a hospital setting. I had not spent a whole life, a lot of my life in the hospital before I went 
December. I don't know if I'd been in the hospital. I broke my arm. I guess it was the one time I was in. My family was sick. I remember going to the hospital to see my father w once. He had surgery on his hand. So I was not real comfortable in, in, in hospitals. S in the clinical training, you, have to, you go around and you're, you, you're there and you spend your assigned award, uh, or not award now, a floor, to, to go and to, to visit the people on, especially those who don't have churches. And I think I spent the first two weeks hiding in the chaplain's office. I really was afraid. It's hard to imagine, uh, looking at me now, that I was in you know, because I, I find one of the most fruitful parts of my ministry is hospital visitation. But I was just, I would sit there, and if there was cookies, and I would find reasons not to do it. And in part of the sharing, one of the chaplains said, just do it, Don. Just do it. And I did. And, and it, it, by just doing it at that time and knowing that others were supporting it, I did it and I obviously grew from it. But I was scared to death for whatever reason. I'm not sure what I thought could happen. I wasn't worried it was in this day of catching COVID or anything. I just didn't feel adequate to go into the rooms. I remember one particular lady who could not speak. She had had a stroke and, and she was not able to speak. And it, it took me a week to figure out how to communicate. I would go and I'd talk a while. But I noticed one time that they, there were Scrabble pieces on the table because I wasn't the only one who would, was having, you know, couldn't communicate with her. And I, I said, to her, I said, well, these are all, she spells out words in the words to tell us what's going on. And so then she and I, by taking Scrabble letters and making words, were able to communicate. God found a way to open up communication so that we could be in relationship with each other. And one, one other situation, you know, as pastors, you get into a, a lot of different situations where you feel inadequate. We were getting a call one Saturday afternoon that a young man had committed suicide. Man, you, you know, you feel like you, you know that your call is to go to that family. And I can remember standing at the door, you know, in, in there and saying, God, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Please, please, God, give me the words, give me the presence to minister to these people in this time. And so I went in and I did that, but it was, I mean, there's fears and reaching out to others that all of us find at different times. We know what we need to do. We know how hard it is to do it. And God says to us through this, just do it. Things that are good and gracious to do, just do it. Um, and God will be with you. God will give you the strength to follow on and to, and to do what needs to be done in that s situation. So do not be afraid. We have been called in all in different ways. You all have different gifts. You know, I kidded around my, my ministry in my first parish. I knew every guy under the age of 30 who didn't go to church. Not because I was in bars. Now, don't think that, Roger. I'm not sure what you're thinking out there. But what it was, I played competitive softball. And so I obviously, they played Sunday morning. I did not skip church to go play softball. Please know that. But it, it was an entry, as strange as it was, into, into people who hadn't, I was the rev. The only place in the world I was ever called the rev. But I, because of playing in that, stuff, in that setting, I was able to build relationships with people who are not necessarily coming into the church. So how is it in those times, in those situations, does God Give us opportunities to be faithful, to be loving, to, to reach out to others. And as you go through this week, how is God calling you to use the gifts that you have to serve him in this time at, in this place? So do not be afraid. Trust that as God trusted and filled the whole early church with his presence, that he will give you the strength to do the things that he lays on your heart to do. Amen.
Two things before we confess our faith in the words in the Apostles' Creed. If you are in, interested in being the lector or the reader, as Gunther and Grace were, and your name's not on the list, please let Sue know. Obviously, <coughs> it, it, it's wonderful to have other people participate. Also, next Sunday, we're hoping to be able to distribute communion. Kathy, if you're not on the altar guild or would, would like to help, not with the distribution, but some of the setup, talk with Kathy after the service. We're, we think we found a way that we can, we can distribute communion in a way that we don't have to worry about touching anybody or whatever. So I th we're, we're going we're gonna to try that next week when Pastor Manny is here. So let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O God. Protecting God. Sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated for caring for refugees and migrants while their homeland struggles for peace. Hear us, O God. Loving God. You promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Dear Lord, in this world of ours, this crazy world of ours, we pray that you would hope and help all people to look into the hearts of the other. Because you say, O oh Lord, you are part of us all. Help us to see the the godness in everyone, as challenging might that, as that might be, O oh Lord, that your presence might bring us together as people and that we might find peace and joy in this creation you have blessed us with. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you'd like to raise for the, stand for the Lord's Prayer, please feel free to do so. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.